we're going to go over off-season strength training. So, um, I'm Dr. Heather Moore, for those of you who don't know. What, are you guys all triathletes or runners, or what do we got sport-wise? Triathlete? Dude. Okay. So, basically, what we're going to talk about tonight is um, what to do in the off-season. So, because you guys are all more endurance athletes, there are different things to do than if you just were a soccer player or a lacrosse player or something along those lines. You're going to focus on the core. Um, and I know we did this talk a couple years ago and I harped on the same thing and I'm going to continue to harp on the same thing. Without a strong core, you can't lock down your arms and your legs. So for 70.3 miles or for 26.2 or whatever, 140.6, you literally are flailing like spaghetti if you can't lock this down. So when you see a lot of these people, you know, getting injured, you see it before it happens. Um, you know, if you were look at a running form of like an Andy Potts as opposed to a me at the end of a 70 points race, his form is still great. It's still nice, it's still symmetrical. Someone like myself who doesn't have the best core, if you look at our form, I'm shuffling, my knees are starting to collapse. All I'm doing is straining the muscles because I don't have the core strength, admittedly, to do a 70 points race. So, this is where developing your core now will help you run a better race, will help you in the long run not have to get bruised by me. Um, <laughs> so that's really the ultimate goal is to stay out of my office um, and not have to see me. And that's where really focusing on the core helps. And I know everyone hates focusing on the core and it's a boring workout, but I can't stress enough that you don't realize how active your hips and your abdominals are when you're on the bike or when you're on the swim and when you're on the run. Any type of activity, your, your core and your hips need to be strong. Otherwise, everything is just flailing about. And what happens is you work 10 times harder to lock it down. So if you don't have a strong core and your leg is wobbling, you've got to get that strength from somewhere. So you've got to then use your IT band a lot more. Anybody have IT and tendonitis? Um, it's 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 like an epidemic. It's ridiculous because what happens is, is you know your knee is wobbling like this. And granted, this is a way over exaggeration. But if we were to put you on a video camera and to watch your knee wobble back and forth like this, you're trying everything to stabilize with this. The first thing that kicks in is your IT band. That's why there's so many IT band issues because you can't stabilize with your core, so this is the biggest guy that'll come in next to play, and it'll start trying to grab, because when you go and you're weak, this is what happens. You don't start going to the outside, you start going to the inside, okay? You start shuffling, you start overpronating. This is the direction you're going. So everything out here pulls you out and tries to do what this should be doing. So if you look at yourself on, you know, if you have a video of yourself further on in, in a cycling, you're going to start to see yourself go like this, okay? Because you're getting fatigued, your abdominal's not there, and you're going to start to bring your legs in. Has anybody ever, uh, triathletes, have you ever had tendonitis in your arms? Elbow tendonitis? We're seeing a lot more because people grip. If you don't have the core strength, to ride, you're going to grip a lot harder. So you're gripping in order to be able to get some sort of stability. Instead of having the stability here and here, you're going to grip your arrow bars like no tomorrow, trying to stabilize. So I'm starting to see a lot of tendonitis because of that gripping pattern. And when you grip for four, six, whatever hours you're on that bike, you're just going to irritate everything. So you should be able to be relaxed. You should be able to have your hands fairly open. But if you don't have that core component, you're not going to be able to do that. You're going to, the minute you don't think about it, you're going to grab hard. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh my gosh, how long have I been doing that? My arms are throbbing. And after you get out of the swing, the last thing you're going to do is use your arms anymore. So core is really key. I can't stress it enough. Um, what we're going to go through tonight is stuff I put together that you can do at home. Um, I don't know how many people belong to a gym. I know for myself, I don't like to go to the gym. So I put a lot of exercises together that you can do in your house without weights, because a lot of you won't be able to do it with weights if you do it correctly. Um, 
when you do these exercises, form is key. And I'll say that a hundred times in Form is key. And I know everybody says that. You guys are extremely good athletes. Okay? You're able to run. You're able to do these ridiculous endurance races. You're going to find the strength somewhere. So you're not someone who is out of shape that, you know, if I tell them to do a lunge, they're going to collapse at 10 lunges. You guys, if I tell you to do 40 lunges, you're going to do 40 lunges. You're going to find the way to do 40 lunges. I doubt many of you can do 40 lunges correct. So when I say form is key, don't just go through the motions. Don't just think, okay, I have to do 40 of these. Let me just bang them out get them done and go on because you're going to feed into the same movement patterns that you do every single time that you run, every single time that you fight. So what you're trying to do when you're doing this exercise program is you're trying to break them. We're going to go through some exercises today and I'm basically just going to show you some exercises to do. You can put them together in one of two ways. You can do them all, just go right down the line and do them all together. And you want to do about 30 to 40 repetitions of each because it's endurance athletes. You're not doing the eight reps, we're not doing the six reps. If that's something you're interested in, get a strength coach. That is, you gotta really play very, 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 very specifically with that. But this is stuff that's gonna help the endurance base that you need in the off season. The other way you can put these together is in a circle. Because let's face it, we all have those bursts of energy or we need to get up the hill or we need to pass somebody or you know, we don't want to get flagged or penalized or sit in the penalty box. So the circuit's going to help you be quick, be fast, and be explosive. So it's not something you need all the time, so I don't recommend doing it as a circuit all the time, but it is something that you do need. You need to be explosive, you need to get out of water, you need to be doing a whole lot of things like that. So um, I did not put these together. Um, specifically for that reason. So those are the two ways you do it. Endurance athletes, 10 reps, three sets, four sets, that's what you're looking at. You're not looking at your traditional eight rep strength. Right? So again, just be careful of that. If you add weights to this workout, totally fine. Just give yourself a little more wet rest. So if you're not, you know, don't do it back to back days. Give yourself, you know, I recommend doing this two to three times a week. Especially in the off season because you're not really doing a whole lot of extensive training. So, you know, doing this two to three times a week, it'll take you about 45 minutes to an hour, which is what it's supposed to. You will have great, you will see yourself improve in your athletic performance and also your injury. Training. So, um, but if you do have weights, don't do it back to back. If you don't have weights, you can do it three days in a row. Again, these are endurance exercises. These are this is meant for endurance athletes, so it's not something that you're going to be like. A lot of times you won't be sore, but for the first couple times you might be. Now, if you're sore, don't do it the next day. If you're sore, give it a day rest, okay? But once you kind of get used to this and you're a little bit more um, in shape with the core, it'll be a little bit easier and you'll be able to do them, you know, probably not three days in a row, but definitely two. So really aim to get this on your calendar two to three days a week. Um, while you have the time. Once the season hits, it, it definitely becomes a little bit harder, I understand. Um, foam rolling. So everybody who knows me knows that I am like the foam rolling creature. Like everybody needs a foam roll. Okay? That needs to be part of your strength training. Why? What's happened when you strength train is you're going to strain some muscles. And you're going to train some muscles that you haven't trained before. Could cause strain, strain could cause pain. Okay? You need to roll them out because they're going to inevitably get tight. That's what they do. That's what muscles do. When you work them, they get tight, especially the weaker muscles, like you're going to be working. So when they get tight, you need to be able to roll them out. If you don't, you're not going to be able to effectively use them. You're not going to be able to effectively train them. What they will do is they will then move on to other muscles. So if you're trying to train your hip abductors, and they're tight and your IT band is tight, you know, you're going to go right to hip flexors. Whenever I ask anybody to do the hip abduction, which is this movement, I inevitably get this movement, okay? It is 10 times easier to do this movement because these are stronger than this. Even though this is a minuscule muscle and it's a really big one, this doesn't happen. So what will happen is as your muscles get tight and your muscles get overworked, 
they're going to start to compensate in patterns that are just going to feed into the other bad patterns that you're already doing. Foam rolling needs to be a part of what you do. Okay, so it's just as important as getting on the bike and running all those other things. Um, all right, so that's my spiel. Uh, quick question on the foam rolling. Yes. Uh, should you just foam roll wherever you feel the tightness? You feel foam roll everything, everything. even if you don't the whole lot, okay? Every day, you know, I say 10 minutes. Um, I, in my office, I do it two minutes at a clip. Like, I don't ever have 10 minutes to sit on a foam roller, but I do it two minutes throughout the day, you know? And I, I guess I have the unfortunate advantage. I have one of these everywhere I could possibly be. So it's easy for me to drop one and people don't find it on anymore when I roll out on it. So, you know. You're not irritating muscle more about by doing it. That is a rumor that someone started on the internet, and I love it. It's great, um, but no, you can roll over joints. You're not irritating the muscles. Um, there is no real harm when it comes to foam rolling, and I know it's. There's a lot of people trying to discount it right now, and I don't know why that is because it's a really great thing. You know, it's safe to go over joints. It's safe to do multiple times in a day, it's safe to do every day. And you should be doing the entire body, every, whether you feel pain or not. And I guarantee you, if you hop on spiking, you're gonna feel something, okay? So, you know, you hop on spike for, you know, 30 seconds, you roll an area, you don't feel anything, great, move on. What happens when you do something like that is there, the nodules, the ones that I get with my hands and I put bruises on you with, have, um, are like an onion. So they start off with nothing. They start off with just this little pea, and then it grows these layers and these layers and these layers. And then you start to get the pain and then when I push on it, you want to punch it, okay? So when it's this little key size, you'll run over it with the roller, may not even know it's there, but you'll break it up. And then it's the non-issue, all right? So, um, and a lot of times the roller will identify problems that you didn't even know you had. I can't tell you how many times I put people on that in my office and they're like, I had no idea that hurt, all right? So, if you don't have any idea something hurts, that means that it's getting set up for another injury. You have to put like a good amount of pressure on what you do if you feel it. Yeah. No, you don't really have to put any pressure on except your body weight. You know, again, it's, it's, it is sadistic if you do it with spikes, but it's not meant to be horrific, you know? When you roll over with the spike, if you feel something, go after it, but don't, you know, don't start pushing on it or whatever. Um, I also use the trigger point ball right there, the little small spike ball, for things like the hamstrings that are really, really, really big and can kind of hide trigger points. Um, I will use that to get in there and get them out a little bit better because sometimes those knobs are so far apart and the hamstrings are so big, especially when you sit on them, that the um, trigger point will kind of shift and, and kind of avoid the knobs on there. But that's as, as aggressive as I get. And if I can sit on that or I can roll on that or whatever, that's it. I'm done. You know, I'm not pushing on anything. So, but it's really important that that be an absolute um, part of your workout. Should you start on the sore muscle that you might know that you have, or should you start? Does it matter like where doesn't you start? Doesn't matter where you start. Doesn't matter where you start. Um, since there seems to be questions about this, I'll take you through my routine. So this is usually what I recommend to people that they do. Um, every day, all right, so you're gonna start just like this. This generally doesn't hurt. If this hurts, you're in a lot of trouble, all right? So this should just feel good. Just getting the blood flowing, breaking up whatever's there. Then you start on this one, okay? This one, you might start to feel some pain. If you have a pain in the butt, literally, this one you'll feel, okay? You wanna kinda lean to both sides, and literally, this is how long I do this for, you know? I mean, it's not anything. Now, granted, I'm rolled out, so it's not like I, I have a whole lot of sugar on it. But this is it. Now, if I find one that hurts, I'll just kind of stay on it, and stay on it, and stay on it. Sometimes it'll completely break up. Sometimes it'll just feel a little bit better. But then I move on. Switch my feet. Go to the other side. All right. Then I go to the hamstrings. So just back and forth, all the way down to the knees. Okay. You don't feel anything like this. Just cross one leg over. 
All right, gives it a little bit more is isolation. Again, the foam roller is safe to use up and down your entire leg. So go all the way down, and I will roll all the way down to my calf. All right, and again, cross one leg over, roll back and forth, nice and easy. Okay. Um, I usually spend a little bit more time on my calves and my hamstrings because they do tend to get a little bit tighter. Uh, and then uh, the IT band. So this is one. So you just go on your side, put one foot in front, go all the way down, okay, to your knee, and then go back up. The more pressure you put on your hands and on this foot, the less is gonna be on the IT band, okay? This one will hurt. If you have not ruled out your IT band with spike, you will probably cry. But it's something you need to do. Then I go down to the outside of my legs, and you're just up and down like that. Again, I don't feel anything. I'm on there 20, 30 seconds. Just making sure, because I ran today, that I busted everything up. All right? Slide onto your stomach. Roll out your quads. And then you're just going to go right up. <laughs> yes, I do this a thousand times a day. So. And then you're just going to go into the front of your shins. If you have a desk job, the one I end with is like the best thing ever. Just this. You'll get a lot of cracks and pops. It's fine. But it's going to break up all that sedentary activity um, that you've kind of instilled in your body all day. So just go back and forth, nice and easy. So that is my phone rolling routine. You hit every part of the body, and honestly, if that's all you have time for, then that's all you have time for. So, um, but I recommend having that wherever you find yourself most, wherever, you know, if you're at a conference call, if your job requires you to be on the phone, do that. If it's at night, whatever. But that's the whole body routine. It's not complicated, it's not something you need to spend a ton of time on, but you have to spend time on. Alright, so. Do you do the ball too? Oh yeah. Like for like Yes. Yes. So I'll use the ball on the bottom of my foot. I use the ball on my hamstrings. I get really bad trigger points in the back of my knee. I'll use it. Um the IT band usually can come out with that, but yeah, that's, that's where I usually use the ball. And the ball is great because especially on the bottom of my foot, I just sit at the front of my desk and I just roll. Well, I have the other two. Yes. Like the route with the nut with the nut. Works just as fine. Yeah. You know, I'm just obsessed with spikes now, yeah. so that's you know my new obsession. But yeah, lacrosse ball. Um, softballs are usually too big and they don't work that well. Baseballs will do the trick. Um, but yeah, anything. Anything just get on there and roll out, get that trigger point out of the muscle. That'll help. Alright? So now the exercises. So, planks. I am a huge plank person and everybody hates them. I understand. They're boring, they're awful, they're terrible, you gotta do it. They are like the top three exercises that hit every muscle in the body without even trying. All right. So for a plank, this is all it is. Okay. Or this. Ideally, you hold that for a minute, three times. I don't think many people can do that, but that's what the goal is. And then you go into side planks, which is just this. All right, and then reverse planks. Okay. You've just done your entire body in three exercises. All right. The goal for those, like I said, is a minute. I usually start with 30 seconds, see what you can do. You know? Three minutes is the goal. I usually tell people to break it up, break however much you can hold. So if you hold it 30 seconds, you know, break that up until it becomes three minutes. Those are the must-do exercises. You don't do anything else, and you do nine minutes of planks a day, you're gonna have a killer core. Now, here's what you're gonna do if you don't, if you start to not do it correctly, you're gonna sag, and the back is gonna kill you. Okay? So the first couple times you do this, you gotta look in front of the mirror and make sure that your back is not like that. So, so an arch is okay. 
You can have a flat back, a straight back, a little bit of an arch, but you can't have that. Okay? That's what I look for. There's a natural curve in your lumbar spine back there, so it's okay if you have a little bit of a curve. This sagging in the middle does not work. When you shake, you're done. Okay? Shaking is done. Um, that doesn't mean you fight through it. It means your muscles are tired. Give it up. Okay? Stop. Restart. Um, full squats. The other myth on the internet that has said that it will ruin your knees and you will all need knee replacements and I don't know why. The fact of the matter is your glute medius, which controls a lot of movement in your hips, um, doesn't activate until you go beyond 90 degrees. So everyone you see with those balls and they're doing their squats, don't. So you want to put your feet shoulder width apart, turn your toes out, back is straight, and you just go all the way down. And you come back up. Okay? When you can do 30 of those, load your spine, all right? But I don't want to see anybody doing this with a squat bar in their back, because you can't get to the floor, all right? So it's just this. The biggest mistake with this is, and I won't do it because it will hurt me, is people do this, okay? And the knees come together. If you look at yourself in the mirror, the knees will come together. Or when you get down at the bottom, you do this to get up. It's a quick jerk to get yourself back up, all right? It's a controlled motion the whole way down and the whole way up, okay? Everything stays upright, all right? You're not doing this, it's not, it's not different pieces. Again, 30 of those before you load your spine, okay? Then you can get hand weights, then you can get whatever you want. Do 30 of those, continuously. All right, so push-ups. They're fairly straightforward. Again, a great total body exercise. Go down as far as you can and come back up. You can modify any single one of these exercises. I have horrible shoulders. I can't go all the way down and push up. It's okay. Modify to what you can do. All right? Mountain climber. So this is what I was talking about. If you build this into a circuit routine one day, and you just want to do, you know, a minute of an exercise and then a minute of a cardio exercise, this is your cardio exercise. All right. So you're going to do mountain climbers and then another exercise. Mountain climbers and then another exercise. Okay. Mountain climbers is just this. It's not this. Okay. It is quick for a minute, all right? Single leg deadlift. Okay, so you all see those little birds that peck water that were big like in the 70s? That's what you become. When people, I tell people to do single leg deadlift, I get this. All right? The driving force of this exercise is not your, uh, is not your torso, it's your leg. So you wanna get the leg up. and then come down, okay? I don't care how far down you go with your upper body, the main thing is that your leg comes up in the back, okay? Ideally, you don't touch down in between legs. So you're just doing this. Nice and easy, okay? 30 on one leg, 30 on the other. Walking push-ups. So you're going to get into the push-up position, and all you're going to do is go down into planks, come back into push-up. Go down into planks, come back into push-up. Um, jumping jack planks. Again, that's another cardio exercise you can do for a minute on the days that you do the circuit. You turn this into a circuit workout. Any questions? Am I moving too quick? Or are you guys good? Okay, so single leg bridging. All you're going to do is go down, 
It's imperative that your pelvis stay neutral. If you can't keep it in neutral, then keep both legs down. You're pushing your weight through your heels. You're pushing your butt off the ground, okay? Single leg is like this. Okay? It's not this. So this has to stay neutral. Thread the needle. It's a variation on a side plank. So all you're going to do is come up into a side plank and literally thread your arm through and come back up. Nice and easy. Side lunges and lunges. The number one exercise that is done wrong in my clip. A lunge is designed to work the whole leg. If you're feeling knee pain, it's because you're doing it wrong. If you feel anything in your knees, you're doing it wrong. So with the lunge, you're going to take a step forward. Naturally, because you're going forward, all the momentum and all the weight's going to want to be in your toes. It has to be in your heels. Then you go down, and you come back up. Okay? Keeping the weight in your heel. No time does my toes go down and any weight go through my toes. Okay? 30 on one leg, 30 on the other. Side lunges, same thing. You're just going to take a step out to the side. I generally tell people to keep their toes up so you're not even tempted to drive with your quads. Sit back, come back up. Okay? Sit back, come back up. You will lose your balance if you're on your toes, so just be aware of that, that's okay. But just sit back and come back up. You're gonna feel it in your hamstrings, you're gonna feel it in your glutes. That's where you wanna feel it. If you feel it in your quads and your knees, you're doing it well, okay? And then, uh, burpees. So, again, start the training day. You can do this for a minute after you each exercise. So it's just down, out, up, and repeat. Okay. Um, and finally, jumping lunges. So for these, this is a very advanced exercise, even though everyone thinks it's so easy, because you have to be able to land it on your heels and then push off from your toes. Right? Because again, if you use your toes and you put your weight through your toes too much, you're going to get that knee pain. Okay? So that is the basics of off-season strength training. Do you guys have any questions for me? Yeah. Uh, briefly, can we talk here in terms of like football, baseball, basketball, different sports, and how, how that was different from... So when you're talking about a more explosive sport, like a football or a baseball or a basketball, we do shorter rep times, okay? We, when you do a, another sport, you do Anything that you need that explosive power for, and you need a little bit in, in endurance athletes, but a lot of the times, not so much. But a football player, a basketball player, we worry about more explosion. So we do a lot more circuit, we do a lot less um, reps, and we'll load weight, I don't want to say earlier, because you have to have good form, but it's more imperative that they load their weight, as opposed to if you guys just do this all winter, you're going to be good. Yes, I'm straight back. Any other questions? Did you recommend including a, a, a weighted set of separate exercise at all? No, I don't I don't normally do that because there's nothing that bicep curls, overhead press is gonna help you do. Alright, that's just not the case. If you have all the time in the world and you want to do this and then and then do an extra, you know, set with weights and do really specific muscles, I'm not going to stop you. Fantastic. But if you're choosing not, not to do this one day a week so you can do your weights, there, it's just not necessary for an endurance athlete to be in there doing, you know, you know, anything like this when you can't do.